Louis XIV, the Sun King, known for his lavish taste and bloody wars, left France on the brink of bankruptcy when he died in 1715, leaving a five-year-old Louis XV to fend for himself. Louis XV was of course too young to provide any real governance over the French Empire. Instead, the regent Philip II, Duke of Orleans, was left with the task of digging the French Empire out of its financial ruins. France had already reneged on some of its debts, reduced interest payments, and was still behind on its payments. Philip II was desperate for a solution out of France's financial quagmire, and John Law, a Scottish wheeler and dealer, was more than willing to provide a solution. John Law is an interesting character. The son of a Scottish goldsmith, John grew up in a world of banking and money lending. However, due to a murder charge stemming from a duel gone awry, John Law was on the run. John traveled across America and the European continent, earning his keep through the luck of the dice. John arrived in Paris in 1716 to a desperate Philip II. John Law convinced Philip to allow him to establish a bank, Bank Generale, which had note issuing capabilities. In other words, the ability to print paper money. Paper money was a new concept for our French citizens. They were more used to the traditional sense of money, silver and gold. To offer an air legitimacy to Bank Generale's paper money, the bank was willing to convert the paper money to silver and gold. With the guarantee that the paper money issued by the Bank Generale was as good as gold, the popularity of paper money took off. Carrying pieces of paper was much easier than lugging sacks of gold coins around. In 1717, John Law established the Mississippi Company, which had exclusive trading rights in Louisiana, which was rumored to have vast deposits of gold. In order to finance the new company, the Mississippi Company issued shares to the public, which could be purchased with the newly issued paper money. The French public, hearing that there was gold in the hills, rushed to purchase shares of the newly formed company. Most French citizens couldn't even locate Louisiana on the map, but the mere mention of gold drove the investing public crazy. However, instead of using the money obtained from selling shares in the Mississippi Company to mine for gold in Louisiana like he said his company would, John Law used his money to buy up the massive amounts of government debt, offering the French government an interest rate discount. In 1718, John Law's Mississippi Company took over the French trade in Africa, and in 1719, he acquired the East Indian Company and the trading rights to China. In essence, John Law's Mississippi Company monopolized all French trade outside of Europe, not bad for a murderer on the run. To further cement the French government's cozy relationship with John Law, the Crown took over the Bank Generale and renamed it the Bank Royale. And most importantly, the paper money issued by the bank was now officially guaranteed by the Crown. 1719 proved to be a busy year for the Mississippi Company, just not in Louisiana. The Mississippi Company bought rights to mint new coins and the right to collect taxes, and he also attempted to buy all the national debt of the French Empire. In order to finance all these rights and the purchase of the government debt, the Mississippi Company issued more and more stock. In 1720, John Law was made France's Controller General and the Superintendent General of Finance. To the investing public, the Mississippi Company must have looked like a no-brainer investment. Not only were there gold to be mined in Louisiana, the Mississippi Company had vast trading rights in Africa, China, and India, held a substantial sum of French national debt, able to mint its own coins, and collect taxes. The CEO of the Mississippi Company, John Law, was the Superintendent General of Finance of all of France, and even the King of France was a principal shareholder in the Mississippi Company. Shares of the Mississippi Company reached 10,000 liers in October 1719 from 500 liers in May 1719, just a few short months, a dizzling 19,000% gain. The term millionaire was coined during this time to describe the newfound wealth many investors were enjoying. What could possibly go wrong? Printing money was what went wrong. With each additional stock issuance of the Mississippi Company, the Bank Royale issued more and more paper money. Some holders of the paper money wanted the reassurance of silver and gold and tried to convert their paper money to silver and gold coins. But all the gold in the empire wouldn't be enough to cover all the paper money that the bank had printed. The Bank Royale ended the conversion of paper money to gold and silver, and instead offered to convert paper money for shares in the Mississippi Company instead. The printing of ever more paper money and the paper money to share conversion led to dramatic inflation. Average monthly inflation rates hit 23% in July 1720. 15 people lost their lives in July 1720 in an attempt to trade their shares in the Mississippi Company. The writing was on the wall. 
Shares of the Mississippi Company collapsed to 500 liers in September 1721 from a high of 10,000 liers just two years ago, a stunning 95% decline. With the Mississippi Company in tatters and the public outraged, enemies of John Law pounced. You don't make it this high up the ladder without ruffling some feathers. John Law fled France and ultimately ended up in Venice, and according to Duke de Saint-Simon, lived in decent poverty.